Uh, these are some of the stories I also like from from the Olympics. Wild scenes as cycling star takes a mid-race toilet break in a packed Paris cafe. An Olympic cyclist stopped at mid-race to use the toilet in a nearby cafe. German star Nils Politz rushed inside a packed pub to relieve himself during the men's road race. The incident... Sir, you're going to need to buy something first. You can't use the bathroom without purchasing something. <laughs> I don't have my wallet on me. Uh, the incident happened around halfway through the 280-kilometer race of attrition. Boy, you just know, like, when, when the event is called the 280-kilometer race of attrition, <laughs> I'm out. I'm not in. <laughs> yeah, no. I am not going to are, train are, for it. I'm not going to participate in it. I don't want to even think about it. Are you better off pooping on the side of the road like a marathoner? Sure. I'd do that. Uh, he was seen coming out of the pub, Café de Moulin, while featured in the 2001 film Amelie, having parked his bike on the course. Thousands of fans roared on with delight at the amusing scene, with many filming him getting back in the race. He later revealed he had suffered stomach issues during the race. Oh. Did not count how many times it took me. He's the waddle of bikers. It was really warm. We were drinking a lot of water, ate a lot of gels, and normally I don't have problems, but today I had an upset stomach. Uh, he won the stage in the Tour de France back in 2021. He finished 70, so uh, almost 20 minutes. How many away. times if you would have to bike 100 miles, do you think <laughs> you would have to pull over to go to the bathroom? I can't even fathom that because I can't fathom biking 100-plus miles. Oh, you could bike 100 miles. No chance. Yes, you could. No. Like, back in the day, my wife and I, we rented bikes from Navy Pier, and we biked all the way to Northwestern and back. Yeah, it's probably 10, 12 miles. Total? Yeah. That's it? Yeah. I thought we went further. I Not that it was 100. I, mean, I thought we went 20 miles. That's that 20 miles? Really? And from downtown it, to yeah, Northwestern? I would, I would guess Sylvie's right. Is it 20? Yeah. I would think it's 10 each way, 10 to 15 each way. Because how long's that lakeshore path? Isn't it and like that, 20 miles? Right, total? and then that's not direct. We had to go through Look at you guys. the north side of the city. Going through the obstacle course. Oh, yeah, that's not easy. Okay, well. No, it listen, wasn't, but my point it. is, it was an easy bike. It was well, you guys easy... are probably riding casually along. Sure. This guy's trying to, you know, set a world record. I wasn't asking you to set a world record. Well, if I'm just... getting on the bike, I'm going to try to set a world record. Oh yeah, and you're. I don't have a. I don't have a bike, biker first gear. Of all. I would like. I don't see. have biker gear. I don't have a bike. Gene Greco will loan you. Yeah. Look, looks like gear. it's about 14 miles. Ooh, wow! So it's a 28 each, each mile way? each way. Oh yeah. See? Ooh, look at you! 30 miles on a bike, and wow. one that I rented. How long did it take you? Um, not long, a couple hours, three hour round trip thereabouts. Do you have to yeah. take? Do you have to pull off to the side and take a dome? We did not. No, I think we went to uh, Ryan Stadium. We we biked all the way to Ryan Stadium and back. Were you watching a Sox game last night? I did. Yeah, I told yeah. you I watched it like a playoff game. Did you watch? Were you the not whole here thing? for that? Did you watch? The no, whole thing? I watched it. Well, well, yes, I did actually. I watched most. Did you watch of it. it to a conclusion. I watched. Like the end of the Cubs game, I was flipping back and forth. I wasn't in the multi TV setup, and I was going back and forth the end of the Cubs game and the beginning of the Sox game. Mm -hmm. And yes, all the way to the conclusion. Wow, that's that's quite the uh, commitment. It was made. only a two hour and eighteen minute game. It was a very fast well, game. As we always say, when they suck, they suck, but they suck fast. I sent um, I sent Chuck um, a text today. Because I think they've done a spectacular job, as our guys have on radio, too. Chuck Garfine, not Chuck Barkley. No, not Charles Barkley. Um, Chuck That's Garfine for, for handling things the way they've handled and, and being honest. Like, yeah. not, not running from how bad they are and yet still being entertaining. I'm with him. Uh, a little football news. 49ers are open to trading Brandon Ayuk. Uh, and it looks like uh, the Patriots, the Browns, and the Steelers are all interested. I believe that um, they've been in contact with the Niners, and I know that the Steelers' talks had stalled, but it sounds like they've been kicked back up. Um, I think this is something we've talked about because they've had to pay so many of their guys, and maybe they just don't have the ability to pay him. But I believe Jeff Meller has some audio that uh, gives you a little insight as to uh, 
you know, whether or not they truly have moved on from him. Yeah, so Christian McCaffrey joined Inside Training Camp on NFL Network earlier today, and they asked him specifically about where they're at with Brandon Ayuk with their current contract impasse. And listen to how Christian McCaffrey refers to Brandon Ayuk. You know, that's that's not part of my job. It's not part of my my position. I think obviously as a as a former teammate or you know Ooh. teammate of his in general, any huh. teammate that you have, you love, you respect them, you want the best for them. Already calling him a former teammate. Yeah, I think that that you know, I I I don't think that that means a trade's already been made and it's about to be announced. I think it is is that they the understanding is is he won't be back. Yes, yeah. yes. I don't think that's a. I don't think. He meant to do that, but yeah. I think that that's the way they're viewing it. Yeah. And by the way, I believe McCaffrey is going to be out for the remainder of the preseason. Calf injury to keep him out, out, uh, keep him out for the uh, for Remember, he preseason. dealt with a calf injury yeah. last year, too, yeah. as the season wound down. So uh, he's not going to be available. Malik Neighbors, as you talked a little bit earlier, is a uh, second time. He's been in a little bit of a scuffle with the Lions. Hate to see that. That was a lot, bit, a lot of bit of a scuffle. Yeah. Uh, and Charles Barkley uh, is not going to retire. He's going to stay with TNTV. Shocking. Uh, TNT, even if there is no NBA affiliation. Now, that surprised me, that part of it. Did you know? Uh, I know. I don't think we've talked through this. Like, I didn't real. I knew he made it a ton of money. I almost swore. A ton of money. But I didn't know the the intricacies or the details of his contract, and he I think he mentioned it to Dan Patrick on on Dan Patrick's show that he signed a ten year two hundred and ten million dollar contract, making twenty one mil a year. He's Go like get a it, Charles. Absolutely, that's a player. Salary. It is. And so if I'm Charles, like I know he had talked about stepping away. If you know there was no TNT, he was going to retire. He signed the ten year extension in twenty twenty two. Right. Like so there's eight more years on that no bad one, boy. No one because they mishandled it so badly at TNT. So what's the game plan for TNT? Ernie's staying. Now he stays. So what's their intention? Are they going to stream inside the NBA and put it on TNT Live and then stream it on their apps to have that? And then he'll do more NCAA stuff. It sounds good. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. All I know is Chuck's making 21 mil a year for another eight years, and that's a good business decision. Yeah, on yeah, and that's why for for him being in such demand when he said he's going to retire, why I did not buy it. Put him on NHL coverage. I mean, put him anywhere. He's sure. entertaining wherever he goes. So, uh, yeah, the, so Charles is going to stay. TNT is also getting some college football playoff games, too. So I bet oh, yeah. Chuck be the will gambling be part segment. of that. Yeah. yeah. I have a story, a couple of uh, animal stories too. I want to get to. I have a, I have a quiz for you about a certain oh. animal, and and I've got another story about uh, something that I want to know if you think this is fair or foul. Good. I look forward to both of yeah. those. Those are good teasers. That's next. I want you to solve a murder mystery. Okay. Good luck with that. Maybe it's not so much murder mystery. Okay. But a who done it? That's right. what it should be called. So who done it? An animal who done it? Kind of like Clue. We've all heard. The phrase raining cats and dogs, right? Correct. Right. It's when it rains hard, raining yeah. cats and dogs. How about fish? A New York, a New Jersey couple said they got a smelly and scaly surprise when a fish came falling from the sky onto their car. The Monmouth County homeowners told the NBC affiliate New York that they heard their car alarm go off, and when they checked it out, the windshield of their Tesla had been shattered. The only clues about what had happened was blood and fish scales. They looked at the dash cam footage, which captured a one-pound bluefish that fell from the sky. The gilled projectile bounced off the windshield and into the couple's garage. The couple believe blank happened. How did it happen? Do they live near the lake? You gotta, I mean, I don't have to give you anything. Cars in the driveway. No, I, I think this is a uh, a neighbor, a neighbor throwing a fish from somewhere, or you know, this is this is. You think a neighbor threw a fish at their windshield? It's a and message. It yes, it's a message. Yes, somebody sleeps with the fishes. Yes, yes. Okay, be careful. You're gonna sleep with the fishes. Do you have a guess, Kevin? No. 
you, really? You just went through that process of trying to turn your microphone on. It to took me no. one minute or one second to, to turn the microphone. Mellor, do you have a guess? No. Could there be like a? Uh, are there such a thing as like uh, fishing um, planes uh, that will um, take fish? You, you know what? Cross. It, uh, what you just said is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But you're getting closer. Okay. Like th- that they were. Sh- Right, the fish were being shipped. Right, and then it dropped from the sky, but not from a plane. From the toilet of the plane. No. Why would what? there be a giant <laughs> fish in the toilet of the plane? I don't know people's diets. You don't poop an entire fish. Again, you can't assume. See, don't you yes, wish I would have kept my mic off now? Yeah, I can. From from so not a plane. No. Come on, you can do it from a helicopter. No. From a blimp, Tyler. You know, because you, you provided me the story a while back. I did. No, no, Tyler did. Meller, you got to You have to have a guess. No. This isn't even a timely story. You've been sitting on this story. I've had this story this for a couple of days. This has been your best I'm not story. Gonna lie. I don't think I gave you this one. I don't. Okay, this maybe one. you know when maybe when Tyler off. was off on his ten day vacation, maybe this came from Jack McGrath. Come on, you could get it. A bird. Yes. Damn. Yes. A bird of so, yes. prey. Yeah. So bird, had flying, yes. been flying above it and actually Finally dropped left. it from a distance that actually caused it to shatter. Do you, did you see how my pea brain worked? Like how how it finally rang in. It finally locked in. The little yeah. hamster started yes. going a little like, faster I, on the I, wheel. And how excited yeah. I just got. I saw smoke coming out of yeah, your ears. Like, I'm like, I wait a minute. Wait a churning. minute. A bird, like yes, because I do See, love watching the birds just, over the lake. You just Scoop. solved the who uh, who who done it. This feels like an Abdallah story. You sure this isn't zoo news? This not zoo news. Okay, I still. Like, I got another. I got another. I still like uh, coming out of the toilet from a plane. Yeah, out of like cow- right, a giant cow- trout. Cow- giant trout fell from the toilet. Uh, dogs can smell their human stress, and it bums them out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, like, when you're stressed out, you stress your dog. They out. know when you're sad. Yeah. yeah. Is there? Oh, is there one more? Yeah. Yeah. Is that was a foul. No, no, no. Fair I got a fair or foul. This is a a vehicle story. Ford is trying to patent a system that reports speeding vehicles to the police. No, that's foul. How Ford system reportedly works. When an equipped automobile detects a nearby vehicle traveling over the posted speed limit, it will use onboard cameras to capture an image of the speeder. The equipped vehicle will then be able to send a report containing both speed data and pictures of the speeding vehicle directly to law enforcement or roadside monitoring units. Narc. Wait, 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 this is stupid. Car Scoops reported that authorities will also receive GSP location data. I don't know why it says GSP as opposed to GPS, GPS but it says GP, uh, GSP. Because this is probably a fake story. It's not. Ford said it's a, in its application that the surveillance vehicles would make law enforcement's job easier because they wouldn't need to quickly identify violations and engage in pursuits. No, I, I, I think this Do is you fake. think that's fair or foul? It's not fake. It's, this is out of Detroit. It's foul because, again, I know we run, this is, we run uh, PSAs about speed. I, I get it. Speed. You shouldn't excessively speed. Sometimes the slower drivers who are wandering the roads they are the make worst it most drivers. Dangerous. Yes. Drive with a purpose, people. Uh, that's my motto. When my wife is yelling at me, I'm just saying to her, "Listen, if you bu- don't drive with a purpose, you are, I believe, as likely or more likely to find yourself in harm's way." The distracted drivers are the worst. Like if you're distracted, if you're you're not driving like it's your number one priority. Yeah. Those are the worst drivers. Yeah. That's really all I got for you. That's that's all I got. They so got an app saw, for that? You they saw a, they, Ford got an app for that? For the distracted drivers? I think that might be more useful, actually. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what they should do. They should capture people on their cell phones. Yeah. Forget the speeding, but if you're on your, your mobile device. You can get your ass caught. So you're more you're in favor of the snitching, but only on distracted drivers, not speeders. Um, I I could I could buy into the distracted driver snitching more than the speeders snitching. Okay. okay. Don't you think? Are you agree or disagree? I'm anti snitch altogether. Maybe well. somebody pooped a fish. <laughs>